Alrighty, welcome everyone. I'm Tiabu and I am here for 86 episode 7. Last time on 86, we of course watched episode 6. We started off with some past for Sheen and his brother that eventually turned into a horrifying nightmare, which is, I guess, uh, analogous to his everyday life, because everything has turned into a horrifying nightmare. And then we had a different flashback where we got to have a really cute experience of all of our squad of Spearhead Squadron newly formed going out and having some barbecue and getting drunk off of water and we got we got Daya and Anju dancing together and everything is great every what could possibly oh no a horrible battle happens we lost a bunch of people including Daya uh and in not a good way and uh we got to see some impact of that on Anju which I think is going to have a ripple effect into her future but we'll have to see and then we switched our sides. We switched our perspective and moved back to observing Lena. She went in and talked to her uncle, Uncle Jerome, and tried to get some change happening and did not get any change to occur. And instead was given a new mission for the Spearhead Squadron. There is a Legion base just across the border or nearby. And uh, we are fairly certain that it is a, it's definitely a trap. It's, it's 100% a trap. And uh, probably the Legion just wants to kill all the people that we send to this base and turn them into brain cases for their own their own robot units and that's fucking wonderful uh, it's not even a part of the war calculus is this concept that when you send soldiers against the enemy you are literally sending them new commanders it's horrifying it's wonderful and i'm, I'm really digging that background now that we have that it changes everything about the show in a really really good direction in a really great way and i'm i'm super excited to see how we play from here so i assume that we're going to start gearing up and getting ready at least if not going into this trap battle that sounds wrong into this this battle that is definitely a trap and that's scary that's very scary um we'll see how it all plays out if if it can play out well but this is gonna be dangerous um I also think that we haven't really done something that I'm expecting, which is, like, facing off with a black sheep that's actually interesting. Well, we've seen the, the Legion sort of strategizing a little bit and doing some interesting things a little bit, having, like, a rival that is a black sheep get introduced or something along those lines would be really cool to me. Having, like, a known persona, you know, like his brother. That would be really cool to me. That could be really interesting, and I think that we've done all the foundational setup that we need to do to bring something like that into the story, and I think that would be really cool. Because something like that might actually rock Sheen, and nothing has really rocked Sheen yet. Nothing at all. So I don't, I don't know. I just know that we're heading toward this, this battle that is a trap, and I'm excited to see how it plays out. We'll find out. And, uh, oh yeah, we had some cute moments where Lena is like kind of, oh, I'm definitely not falling for this boy whose who's vi voice I'm hearing. Definitely not, Lena. Definitely not. Uh, no, she's, she's definitely, definitely falling for him. It's a thing that's happening. Okay, and I think that's everything that we've got. So, I'm ready for episode 7 of 86. I will mention a huge thank you to an effort spearheaded on my Discord server by Vita Winter um, to edit a couple of lines in this episode and the next episode, I think. Um, I'm still using the subs, please subs, though I'm using an edited version that was given to me directly by my Discord folks, um, which contains a couple of edits. I think I didn't I didn't look at what the edits are because I don't want to get spoiled, but I think it's like two lines that have been altered slightly and that's it. And this seemed important to them and it seemed important to, to multiple people and multiple people on the Discord have vetted it and said that this is the way to go and so I'm I'm going along with the flow and we shall see so hopefully whatever lines are in this episode that aren't amazing will be slightly more amazing I I don't know we'll we'll see in any case episode 7 of 86 is up and ready to go there will be two versions picture in picture in the description timer on YouTube beep beep timer to count you down early access on the patreon please check it out and let's go beep beep timer Ah, funeral for Daya. Pew, pew, pew. We're doing this all in silence. A laughing, laughing celebration. Happiness. Yeah, not for her. And everybody just looks away. What can you do? And he's just talking to her. Is this what he's doing on, on that side of the conversation? 
Whoa. Very pretty. OP? Yeah. Okay. And there are more of them! Two more, I think. Joining the others in the field of flowers. I couldn't read it, damn it. Oh. What kind of surprise? Bombs. <laughs> wonder what's actually in it. What's actually in it? Whoa. <laughs> what are you sneaking, Lena? Revolution Festival. We brought that up before, right? Oh, <laughs> later. <laughs> Oh. Okay, why are we doing all of this again? Oh, we're back in the city. Okay, so we cut out of there to here. We don't experience that. Is tonight the Revolution Festival? It must be. What's this, um, this little cute... Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> They're used to it. Of course they bother them. Oh, wow, this is getting very interesting. She is slightly losing it, huh? Her mind is in two places at once. Ah, oh, yeah, make it gross. That's straight Lord of the Rings stuff. Ah, oh, yep. Very good. Very good. Oh, interesting. It's just the guys. We don't know the truth. Ah, because he always is hearing them. Always. 
Jeez. Okay, we'll see if this all holds up. Less people. Yeah. We'll see. I think they're trying to kill him. I think they're trying to get him dead. But they're being... They're being intentionally slain. <laughs> I like that we've got Ray, like, divided by all of the little pins. His name is Ray, right? I, I actually don't know. Okay, wait, something's happening in real world? Oh, okay. Chop, chop, chop. Hmm. This is uncle, right? Yeah. Why? Why? Why are they a settled matter? Still an internal matter? No, you're you're getting nothing. Right, it's the ball, the party. Uh, no. Fuck you. So, she took that as success, but that was not success. That was the opposite, right? Is she here in uniform or something? Ooh, like she's grieving? Ay, ay, ay. Now that's a, that's a strategy. Now that's a strategy. Let's go. True. Boy, uh oh. Later. Ugh. Oh, fireworks. Weep wop. Oh, she's got her parade on. Aww. Oh, cute. She's going to talk to him throughout. Oh, oh, man. No, I'm just chilling at a fancy party. <laughs> yeah, what is it? Oh, it's fireworks? She sent them the... F I was wondering, I was wondering where she, where they got those. Okay, everything got all twisted up. You don't think fireworks are going to cause some traumatic, some traumatic uh, responses? <laughs> Ooh. Similar to the stars. Together. Oh, we're doing that? Oh, buddy. Let's all watch the fireworks in District 1. All these things that will never happen. He's going to say, yeah, sure. What if the war, what if the war comes to District 1 and we have to fight there and instead of fireworks, we're watching shells go off? That would be sick. Shin's watching, right? Yeah. Very good. Interesting. 
Oh, he only remembers the headless nightmare. Wow. Oh, buddy. Oh, no. Yeah. I'd rather not have to. Nicely done! Everything that I wanted expressed there. You're going to fail that immediately. I won't let anyone else die. You're going to fail that task immediately. That's going to fail immediately. Wait, are those new juggernauts? Custom Warhead. Oh. Please enjoy them with everyone. Oh my god, it's a whole, it's a whole crate of fireworks. Hey, but they did get some supplies, so that's good. No new people, though. Tell her what? Think it would be okay? I wonder what she's talking about. Huh? Oh. What is on her back? And is... And is Anju... Um, um... Is she Alba? Her eyes are the wrong color, so no. Well, I don't. I don't know what the the scar is. Tell her what. Cry tears. What are, what are we showing here? How she met Sheen? Take us there? Who will take him? Wow, really worn off. And we're just cutting to it? Wait, what was that about? What was all of that about? There's no way that, that all of them survived this, right? It begins. Fireworks, there we go. Okay. What just happened? Oh, the mortar's coming down. The trap. What are those? Well, shit. Brother, he's here. He's not going to, is he? 
He is going to. Okay. Were those were those artillery shells literally cutting holes through the cloud cover? That's so sick. How many did they lose? No, he said it was already settled. They're trying to kill them. He's going to tell her. Okay, finally, tell her. Are they all criminals? Is this a death sentence? Are they all criminals? And is intended as such. We are meant to die. They do it one group and then one and they let them all die. The ones who survive. Then they throw them into the worst unit. So they separate you. <laughs> oh, wow, this is this is stage three. The spearhead. Oh, it's so, it's so Sanderson. <laughs> God fucking damn it. So it's not even, it's not even just hopeless, it's hopeless, hopeless. And they will separate you out. Yep. <laughs> yep. And giving, giving more of your smartest people, of your smartest soldiers to the enemy. You fucking, fucking idiots. It's absurd. It's just the beginning. Yeah, they've known. Ah. Uh. Ah, uh, uh-huh. What choice do you have? Doesn't get anything, though. Yeah. But it's their home, too. They've all got reasons. Mm-hmm. Internal abuse. Got it. So they would be... But as it gets scratched out, their entire possibility of a legacy of anything is wiped out. It's not that simple. Man, what are we going to do? What are we what are we going to do? Die fighting. Oh, that's so badass. 
It's awful, but it's so badass. Especially contrasted with the Revolution Party sequence, where she's walking around and there's all the food. Oh, it's, this is great. Keep living as long as you... Ah, great shot. Ugh. Eyes, eyes, eyes. Determination in the face of the impossible. Zach, is that the end? That's it! Yeah! Wow! That's her reaching out, right? During the... Yeah, okay. And we're close enough to the end that there's probably only like a... I don't know, maybe like a 20 second end sequence? Interesting. Man, this episode flew by. Flew by. Oh, wow. That was a snap to, to her and then a snap to here. Interesting. Thirty seconds. Falks, Combat Dist District Sixteen. Is this the emergence of a rival? I think it is. I think it is. Hello, hello, big boy. Eco, Eco, where? Let's go where? 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 There's no escape. Let's go, like, let's go forward into battle. Let's go, like, let's run away. Let's go, like, what? I don't know. Any of these things seem like viable options to me. Oh, this episode is good. Oh, this episode was good. I mean, it was good. Ah. Ah. <laughs> okay. First things first, we've talked about this before. Contrast. Con contrast. Contrast is everything. And we nail it over the course of this episode. Um, um, specifically, the festivities happening in the city during the deaths of everybody elsewhere. Holy shit, it's great. She is here on the parade. We're snapping between locations and things. But she is getting triggered by voices of crying because they remind her of the voices inside the Legion the, the, of the Black Sheet. But it's this sequence that I love. Straight out of um, Two Towers. I think it's Two Towers where this happens. It might be Return of the King. Uh, 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 straight out of Lord of the Rings. A uh, steward of Gondor eating squirty, squirty grapes and grape tomatoes and shit. And <laughs> While um, Pippin sings a sad boy song. It's perfect. And, and they do it here perfectly. These guys, these people are eating, uh, 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 dripping fucking goop off of themselves, being all, all gross and shit. And it's a perfect way to, to provide a visual for what's happening when people, we're talking about people getting their limbs blown off, their faces ripped to shred, and he slices through the meat. Oh, it's excellent. Drink the wine. This is, it echoes the, the blood, right, on this tart or creme brulee or whatever the fuck it is. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. It's so simple. Bodies get burned all over, gut, stomachs ripped open with guts pouring out. Perfect. Perfect. Gruesome and gruesome. 
it's all just part of the party, and they laugh about it while we rec- while we reminisce or or recollect the horrors that we go through in the war. That these people get to live in peace because of our struggle. Mm, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. It's really good. Okay. There's an issue with this episode. It's my only qualm with the episode, and it's solved really easily. Um, the issue is that it's hard to follow exactly when everything is. And it's solved really easily because they give us the date and the time on, on each of those scene transitions. I'm just dumb, and I haven't read them. <laughs> I'm j- This is my fault. I'm dumb, and I didn't read the date and times. Some of these things are out of order, right? Like, they've already got the fireworks, and then we, we see them get the fireworks later, yada yada. It all sort of comes together later. It's fine. But, but, but that's my only qualm with the entire episode. And it's my fault, not the episode's fault. So it's not even a problem. It's great. Okay. So these goofies, this goofies, and let's move along. Let's move along because we got a couple of other important things to talk about over the course of this episode. No matter who dies, none of us can see it as unusual anymore. And we see this balloon go flying and the kid crying. It's something that has been lost forever and drifts away past the statue. For some reason. Um, okay, so here we are. It's just the guys out here. He's sleeping, says he's tired. We don't know the truth, but it's probably exhausting never getting a break 24 hours a day. Yes, because the voices. But also, yes, with all these casualties, I will, trying, I will try to give you a new member. I'll try to make it a top pi- priority. And they, there's a pause and they respond, yeah, that would be good. But of course, it's not possible. This unit is defending our most important base. It has the right to receive reinforcements first. Why do they have their suicide squad defending their most important choke points? It, it really seems like all of the military personnel on San, San Magnolia's side... I, by the way, I have definitely called San Magnolia San Gloriana at some point, and that's a, that's a goop thing. Oops. Um, um, why are they so incompetent? What's up with that shit? I don't know. I do like this. I love how we're setting... Uh, uh, his name is Ray, right? The brother. Uh, setting him apart far off to the side, separated out by these colored, uh, colored thumbtacks. It's pretty interesting. Um, I wonder if that's him in the big, uh, in the big robot we just saw. I don't know. Hang in there a bit longer and I'll make it happen. So you overstepped and complained directly to me. And he says... The resupply and plot processor replacement plans are a settled matter, which she takes. I've already informed them of your request. You probably still don't know as it's an, uh, still an internal matter. We're finally getting supplies. And he responds, so do your duty as, as best as you can, which is to say, no, <laughs> no, I didn't answer your question. There's a specific reason I didn't. It's because I don't want to give you an answer that you don't want. Oh, my God. By the way, deflection. Are you ready for the Revolution Festival party? Deflection. Remove your mind from this process. Like, if she had just thought about it for one second, she'd been like, wait, Uncle Jerome said no to me. In in so many words. Weird. Isn't that the real job of a daughter of the Milesia family? I hate this. Ah, ah. No, the real job of the daughter of the Milesia family is to do whatever the fuck she wants. Fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. Don't make her go to a party. I do love the black morning dress. It's great. I love the idea of going to a dress that no, uh, uh, going to a party in a black dress that everybody leaves you alone. Wonderful. And of course, she's running away constantly from her her fiance people. All right. I love that he calls her to check in. It's cute. It's a it's an added cute moment. It's just cute. And the fireworks have arrived. We talk about fireworks. We talk about the Revolution Festival. I'm sure they're at where they're beautiful where you're at. The night air is clean. I wish we could see them. And she stops and says, I wish someday let's all watch the fireworks in District 1 together. Which is phrased in the way that it's always phrased in an anime when it's never going to happen. Or maybe when it will happen in a different way. I think the 86 are going to be unable to hold back the Legion and war will sweep through the streets of San Magnolia in an unpredicted way. And all these fucking Alba that we've seen chowing down are going to be freaked. Absolutely freaked as the the enemy of their own creation who they kept sending processor units to like fucking idiots because, because they cannot let the 86s back into society, right? It is because of their racism. It is because they they cannot, like, take responsibility for what they have done. They are going to have to take responsibility for what they have done in the form of Legion storming their whole city. I love it. I love it. It's great. It's it's such a 
they're absolutely destroying themselves. They're absolutely fucking themselves, and it's beautiful. It's, it's beautiful. When the war is over, when you leave the army. Nah. <laughs> Never gonna happen. Never liked the mushy stuff, but Anju was able to cry. This is a, a, a beautiful sequence and a beautiful conversation. And we move into the not forgetting. You remember my brother? That made me happy. I love that. Because I wasn't able to remember him. And then we move into, will you remember us as well? And she has this shock moment. Into blast of fireworks silence. Excellent. I think, I think really excellently put together. Of course I will. But I'm going to prevent you from dying first. We get this face from her all made up in all of her shit. But for some reason, she looks... Mm. like warrior princess, you know, like Amazon warrior princess, uh, uh, two day delivery. <laughs> no, but, uh, but really there's, there's some Xena here and Xena, right? I think it's Xena. There's some, there's some stuff there. It's great. Will you remember me? We answer that question in a fantastic way. I think brand new juggernauts, brand new supplies that they all manage and none of it's for them. Drinking water, rations, energy packs, fireworks. And we get the shower scene. Okay. So I want to talk about the shower scene because, I don't know, I have a habit of talking about scenes in which our female characters are nude. Because they can often be really, really fraught and fucked up and bad. Like, straight up, they can be really bad. I was worried about this in the first river sequence, right? First time. Here we have two characters, intended to be attractive characters, nude in a shower. First litmus test for a scene like this. Is there a reason that this scene can't happen outside of the shower? Answer, yes, there is a reason that this scene can't happen anywhere else. We need to demonstrate Anju's scars. It's important. It's crucial for the sequence. And it's important because Anju never showers with anyone, and we'd have to set that up. And that's what we want to express here. Already... This passes. This already passes. It passes. There's a reason for this scene to be in the shower besides nude women. Fucking amazing. Love it. I'm so I'm so happy about that. I'm so happy. I'm so happy because I don't mind nudity. I don't I don't mind it. I need there to be a justification. I need there to be a justification, right? Is is it is it being used for some purpose? Is there somebody in the scene whose gaze we are inhabiting, and does that say something about them or about the scene? Um um. Is it is it that the person who we're looking at is controlling the camera and is is utilizing their own sexuality because i'll tell you i got no problem with with people being like being capable of understanding their own sex appeal great and great to to, to put that on fictional characters fine no problem here we check all the boxes and we don't get gazy with it at all except i guess here i mean I don't even think this this really counts, but it is it's a little close, but it, it doesn't bother me in the slightest. The conversation is legitimate. It makes perfect sense. It's a private conversation that happens in the shower and it happens in the shower for a good reason. And we it sets up the suspense for the rest of this episode because we're like, what are they? What are they? What, what's the thing? I was thinking like, oh, maybe they're all criminals and Spearhead Squadron is the place where they send criminals among 86s. And maybe we could justify that by saying that like Kaye got kicked out of her squad because the people who were actually responsible for abusing her blamed her or something like that. We could make that work in a way where it's like, oh, they're all being sent here to die because it's actually a, 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 a punitive sentence for other 86s. Nope, it's way worse. If you don't die on the field as an 86 after a couple of years, they send you here or they send you somewhere else to the front lines and then if you don't die there they send you here and everybody knows it except the people in charge ah except i mean the people in charge in charge jerome and above obviously know it too but lena didn't know it and that's amazing if we told her she'd stop calling you thought you thought why would she stop calling she cares about y'all but okay not a bad person so she shouldn't get involved that's why sheen and Ryden can't bring themselves to say it until they do they think it would hurt her. And here we go. A-U-G-H. R-E apostrophe S? Hmm. 
G H T A U G H T caught. O R E S O R E apostrophe S. O R E apostrophe S. Ors ought. Whores caught. Whores thought. Um. Shores thoughts. A U G H T. It's it would be caught, right? I don't know. I could. I know I could look at this up, right? Like this is clearly con. This is clearly canonical. That I I could type in like Andrew Scar back and be fine, and I'd find it. I'm not going to because the the show doesn't want us to know. It wants us to know that she has a scar. I don't know. I don't know what it says. But she grew her hair out to cover it, and Daya's one of his first things was to ask her about, to tell her she had pretty hair. That's really sweet. <laughs> That's really sweet and super duper sad. It's okay now, honestly. There's no need to hide it. And she brings up Daya. Super cute. Don't you want to tell her and she is crying as well? No. I don't think I have the right. Why? Should we see this flash through for her? She goes up and she executes somebody, right? I'm actually not sure. No, no, no. She goes up and she sees Sheen execute somebody. Right, okay. Even if we die, our Reaper will take us there. And this was the moment where she fell for him. I know he'll take me there. But then what about Sheen, who will carry his heart? Excellent. Really excellent, wistful way to end that sequence and move us into battle. I like that this demonstrates time passing as the Undertaker symbol is wiped clear, clean from here. Crazy scary. All personnel are ready. The base is a decoy. Let's go in. This sequence is insane. They are literally cutting holes through the, the sky. Poof. Fuck. God, the size and momentum of that shell is absurd. I, I thought almost that they had, like... Do they have satellite warfare? Are there Thors up, th up there? Like, what? Because, uh, what? Nope, just super high velocity, high, high, high artillery. Insane. Insane. Pure shock, Sheen acts. We juxtapose it. Contrast again. In the same way as before, right? This, that. This, that, the happiness of fireworks, the terror of explosions. And I think we're doing it, we're showing the faces of people who are dying. Dead, dead. Analysis complete. Never seen anything like this. This is horrifying. And we come here. I'll get you more personnel. I'll do it. I promise. Nope. It's a death sentence. This is the whole goal. And the flow, I will say, because I, I haven't really mentioned it, the flow of scenes, the flow of, of transitions throughout all these conversation moments in particular. Excellent. Excellent. They keep, the, they keep everything moving. They keep everything moving wonderfully. The fear of a rebellion, the fear of all these things, sent to the worst of the fighting, and those who still don't die are sent here. We are meant to fight until we die. The new juggernauts, those aren't for us. So we're not just making you fight to protect us, we're making you fight just to kill you. Straight up, this is bridge four, right? You send people here as punitive matter. You get some value out of them until they die, and they run because they don't want to die. Some of them do choose to just just die. Um, I think it's it's interesting. It's important in Sanderson's Bridge Four that the chasm, the honor chasm, exists as a concept because I think that the same is true here. I think any of these eighty sixes could kill themselves and nobody would care because nobody cares about them except that they die. That's fucked, fucked, fucked. Did you all know? Yup. Nobody comes back. All of them know. Why not run? Why, run? why not get revenge? Because they have reasons. They know that this is unfair to them, but they refuse to be unfair in response, right? They are above that. They walk that higher road to some extent. That's pretty fucking cool. It's a cool concept, at least. All of us had different people who we cared about. There are others who know that everyone can be, can be a problem. Not everyone is blah, blah, blah. It's all complicated. It's all complicated. So we decided what we wanted to be. Just because scum treats you like scum doesn't mean that you should become scum. It's great. Survive to the last moment, and we'll go down fighting. Is anyone stupid enough to hang themselves just because they'll die tomorrow? No. <laughs> Mostly no. 
Although a lot of people do conceptually do the same thing. Oh, my life is so miserable. There's nothing to live for. Great use of fireworks as the motif all the way through. Really stellar. And then this shit. Who's this big boy? I bet it's his brother. Or something similar. Bom, bom, bom. It's hoping for like a rival or something. Something exciting. Standing upon the crushed, the crushed skulls of Legion. Or, or of Juggernauts. So sick. Man, this, this episode walks a line between emotionally potent, um, um, narratively potent, bringing some things together that make a lot of sense in an interesting way, and some cool, uh, some cool visual language as well. Really good. Really good. I wonder if they will ever be able to watch those fireworks together in District 1. I'm actually going to guess yes, but not in the way that they expect. Cool. Okay, everyone, that's going to be a wrap for me. Thank you so much for watching. This has been 86, episode 7. I hope you've enjoyed, and I hope to catch you next week when we watch the next episode. See you there. Peace.